Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Mayor Ginther and I are joined today by Columbus Police Chief Thomas Quinlan and also by Major General John Harris, Adjutant General of our Ohio National Guard. I am uh, this afternoon calling to service uh, the Ohio National Guard to protect the citizens of the state of Ohio. Further, at the request of Mayor Ginther and the Chief of Police, I'm ordering the State Highway Patrol to also enforce and help enforce the criminal laws within the city of Columbus for this short period of time. 
Sadly, sadly, there is a relatively small number of violent individuals who pose a specific threat and a real threat to our law enforcement officers and to the safety of the people of Columbus and Franklin County. The vast majority of demonstrators want simply to be heard. They want to focus attention on the tragic death of George Floyd, and they want to focus attention on other injustices. We always, always welcome such voices. But the voices calling for justice, the voices calling for change, are sadly being drowned out by a smaller group of violent individuals. These violent individuals threaten the safety of our citizens, of the community. Acts of violence cannot and will not be tolerated. This violence must stop. I'm activating our National Guard to help drive out hate and violence and to help instill order. This is about the safety of our communities, our neighbors, our families, our friends. It is about protecting from unnecessary destruction the small businesses that our fellow Ohioans have worked so hard to create. It is also about protecting the First Amendment and allowing voices of protest to be heard as they always should be heard in this state and in this country. These voices should not be covered over. They should be allowed to be heard. We do this today so that love and kindness and compassion and peace can triumph over hate and violence. I understand that people are angry. I understand that people have pent up rage. And I understand that we are living in very uncertain times now in this country. But it is in these times of uncertainty and in times of division that we must call upon the better angels of our nature. It is this time when we must come together as one state, as one people, to care for each other, to value one another, and to protect one another. Mayor. Thank you, Governor. Uh, thank you to General Harris and our Police Chief uh, Tom Quinlan. Good afternoon. The last week has been an emotional time for our country and our community has not been immune. The last three days, including today, have seen pro uh, protests across our community focused especially downtown. I understand the anger and frustration that has led to these protests, and I share them. Racism and discrimination are threats to the quality of life, health, and safety of our community. I want to assure our residents that we are committed to addressing these concerns and making changes wherever we find them. But at this moment, we have evidence that we must focus on defending and protecting our city and its infrastructure. I commend our police officers for overall exceptional restraint and for putting themselves in harm's way. But we're now at a point where we can no longer tell the difference between who is protesting for change and an end to racism and who has only chaos and destruction in mind. In addition to the activation of the National Guard, we are implementing a citywide curfew from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. beginning tonight. 
It remains in place until it is rescinded. Anyone remaining out on the street or in public places during that time can be arrested. I want to emphasize that we respect and value and welcome the right to peaceful protest, to raising your voice to make sure it is heard, for holding elected officials accountable for change and reform. This curfew is not intended to stifle peaceful protest, rather to protect our city from those who seek to use this moment of great pain and frustration over racial injustice to destroy our city. Unfortunately, each day, the protests have escalated from peaceful to antagonistic to vandalism. Last night, more than 100 public and private properties were damaged. At least 10 properties were looted. Five police officers were injured from bricks and rocks being thrown at them. Multiple police, fire, private vehicles were damaged. With the information we now have, in addition to the fact that we remain in the throes of a global pandemic with more confirmed cases here in Central Ohio than anywhere else in the state, where the city continues to see and fight back COVID-19, we must take these actions to protect our city and protect the rights of our neighbors to peacefully protest. Let me reiterate, what we are doing in no way lessens my belief that racism is a public health and safety crisis. Nor does it mean we will stop making changes to becoming an equitable city that the people of Columbus deserve. These actions are laser focused on those who have come to our city to do us harm. There are extremists in this crisis that believe that you have to make false choices between peaceful protest and protecting one another, our property, and our community. We reject those false choices. We believe that we can peacefully protest, keep each other safe, and make sure that our community remains America's opportunity city. Chief Quinlan. I want to thank Governor DeWine, Mayor Ginther, and Major General Harris uh, for their support here in the city of Columbus. My message to those in the streets of the city of Columbus that we have been working with in the last two days and to our whole community, enough. We have worked with the protesters. We have listened to their calls for change, and we have worked to make sure we can provide an environment that they can have their voices heard. But the protests have transformed from lawful, peaceful protest into criminal riots, felony riot, felony vandalism, and people are being hurt. The protesters' voices must be heard when it comes to racism. However, their voices are being overshadowed, overshadowed by the people committing vandalism, looting, and damaging our, our local landmarks, the State House, Ohio Theater, and many others. Our community, because of this activity, is suffering. People are calling on the police, and they are unable to get a response. There are people in our community that dial 911 that need a police officer to respond to their house for domestic violence or many other crimes. They are not getting a timely response because our resources are tied up with people attacking our infrastructure and our police officers and our private business owners. I am grateful. I'm grateful for the compliance that we have gained from many people in our community that are protesting for legitimate change. I am especially grateful for the resolve our officers have had when encountering and standing shoulder to shoulder in our community and dealing with the violence 
and the hatred that we are encountering in our city. They have worked to keep all of us safe and put themselves in harm, harm's way to do so. Columbus will survive this, but not if we are unable to stop the violence, protect our city and our people. It is time to listen to the legitimate concerns of those in our community and not allow those bent on destruction to exert their will over an entire city. My thanks to the Ohio National Guard and to General Harris. My pledge is to work in tandem with him to restore order and peace in our city. And I end with enough. General Harris. Thank you, Chief Quinlan. Governor DeWine, Mayor, on behalf of the almost 17,000 men and women of the Ohio National Guard, we accept this challenge to supplement the police force of Columbus. And it's important to emphasize that this is a Columbus response. Mayor Ginther is in charge. We're supplementing Chief Quinlan. The National Guard is not coming in to take over and the National Guard is not coming in to impose martial law. Ohio knows its National Guard. We've put over 500 people in the food banks in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic. We've supplemented the staff in, in our prisons. We've provided medical support in our prisons and our nursing homes. And we've conducted testing around the state for the coronavirus. Ohio knows its National Guard. And Ohio knows that its National Guard is comprised of the men and women of the communities. We are your coworkers, your friends, we're welders, we're accountants, we're bookkeepers, we are the people of your community. And we're fortunate because we're the fourth largest National Guard in the country, so we're able to perform those missions and still accept the challenge that's been placed before us today. The force that's coming to Columbus is a specially trained force, it's called the National Guard Response Force. It brings a full set of capabilities to provide the, the support that we need for the Columbus Police Department. They're specifically trained for these sorts of missions and the suite of capabilities that they bring is deep. But the most important thing is that this force understands that these are the people of Ohio. They understand the anger. They understand the rage. And it's our purpose to ensure that we treat every person that we encounter with dignity and respect. But let there be no doubt, we will accomplish our mission. We will ensure that order is retained and that the people of Ohio and the property in Columbus is protected. That's our mission and we proudly accept it. Thank you, Governor. General, thank you very much and thank you and the members, the men and women of the National Guard who serve, serve us. And thank you for taking on this mission. Chief, thank you very much. Uh, I want to say thank you to the men and women of the Columbus Police Department. Um, this has been a tough few days, um, but we are very, very grateful for the restraint they've shown, uh, for the professionalism that they have shown. You should be very, uh, very proud of your men and women of the Columbus Police Department. I know, I know the mayor is as well. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.